<clears throat> All right. Well, the last episode, you might remember, we checked out the diameter or the bore, if you will, just to be true to the instructions, which say to do that. And you might recall everything looked beautiful. So I'm gonna slide this over a little bit out of the way so I can check out the book, see what the book says. So here we are. We already did this step here. Um, and it says, chances are your home measuring tools aren't as accurate as those a machine shop, but that doesn't mean you can't use them to double check whether your engine block machine work was performed correctly. Utmost trust in your machine shop may tempt you to skip this step, but before doing so, keep in mind that machinists can make step two using the tightening specifications sequence optional shown in steps seven and eight in chapter eight, install each main cap and use a dial bore gauge to measure the diameter of each main bearing bore in a crosswise pattern. All measurements should be consistent within one one thousandth of an inch with the maximum amount of round of less than a half a, th half a thousandth on any given bore. All right, so um, we are going to put the caps on. So we're going to flip this baby over and let's see what we got going on here. Do a little cleanup work here. All right. So this is number one. Now we're going to step seven and eight in chapter eight. Torque all M10 inner main bolts, number one through 10 in the accompanying diagram in the sequence shown to 15 foot pounds. Before proceeding further, you must use a rubber mallet to hit the crank rearward, then forward with the rubber mallet. This aligns the thrust bearing. Okay. Then use your torque angle gauge to twist these inner main bolts in sequence an additional 80 degrees. All right. So as I recall, the instruction that, that I recall reading somewhere earlier is that you put a little bit of 
SAE30 oil on these bolts before you start tightening them down. Oh, and the two. This is the... I want to flip it around because the book shows the front of the engine. Going this way. All right, so number one, that we're going to start off with this guy right here. All right, first bolt, number one. Now I get to use my new torque wrench. Got this nice baby on sale at Harbor Freight. It's a digital and it measures angles uh, for, I think it's 159 or 169 regular price. Got it on sale with a 25% off coupon for um, 127, I think it was. So let's go ahead and set this to 15 foot pounds. All right, now let's find out what size, uh, Thirteen. All right, there's fifteen foot pounds. All right, two. All right, there's 15. So now I have to tighten it an additional 80 degrees. So what you do there is you put it on the, the degrees and then you tell it how much you need to tighten it.
Okay, so now we're doing back to 15 foot pounds. We're gonna do this guy. So I didn't show all of it here. I cut out a lot of portions here where I had a lot of problems with the Harbor Freight digital torque wrench. Again, I skipped past a lot of it, but I had a lot of problems with that torque wrench. So you know what? I just decided the heck with it. I'm going to switch back to the old basic click style torque wrench. Okay, so according to my handy GM LS series how to rebuild book, we're still on the pre-assembly and we have to measure the uh, width of the, basically the, uh, the crank uh, bore space here. And according to my trusty <clears throat> Summit Racing has a really nice web page here where they give all the specs. So for the LC9 engine, the engine block specifications 
The main housing bore diameter is 2.751 inches. 2.751 inches. All right. So we're going to get our trusty dial bore gauge. <clears throat> and we're going to take this, set this up for 2.751. So, I'm going to put this to 2.74 using the 2.6, the 0 0.8, 0 0.4, and 0 0.2. So that should give me 2.74. All right, <clears throat> then we're gonna get our micrometer here and we're gonna set this to 2.751. So this is a three to four, so this isn't gonna work. We need the two to three. That's one to two. This should be the two to three, two to three. So we want to set this to 2.751. Here's 2.75, right? Because there's 2.75. So that would be 2.751. All right. Zero this baby out. Sometimes it's better to sit. All right. Look at that, right on the zero. All right, close enough. All right, so we're trying to measure It's right on zero. I think we're allowed to be one half of one thousandth out of round. And that's what that is right there, one half of one thousandth. Let's see what. Look at that hits right on the zero. So it's one half of one thousandth out of round. That's fine. That's perfectly, look at that, that's perfect. Right on the zero, how about that? Well, oh, this is getting kind of tight in here. Look at that, oh, that's pretty damn close. Right on the zero. All right, I don't know 
if this is gonna fit through since I put the caps back on. This could be a problem. Ooh, it does fit through. This could be a problem, but I probably should have did this. So that's one half of one thousandth. In hindsight, I should have did this before I put all the caps back on. There's one half of one thousandth. So it is perfectly, perfectly symmetrical. And the last one. This one's about a, almost a thousandth too big, but we'll see what it measures this way, as long as it's round. So that one's hitting right at the zero. Gosh, that's ever so close to acceptability. It could be out about a th right there out of round, and it goes just barely beyond it. I don't think that's going to be a problem. That's so close. So that step is done. All right. So the book here says all measurements should be consistent within one one thousandth, which it was, with a maximum out of round of less than a half a thousandth on any given bore. So the only one that was maybe a little bit more than a half a thousandth was number five here, but it was ever so close. Ever so close. All right, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna move on to number three. Measure other engine parts. It will be helpful to check the roundness of other critical surfaces, including but not limited to crank journal diameters. Inspect for taper and out of round and connecting rod bearing bores. This is especially true if your machine shop didn't have much of a hand in preparing these, i.e. they were new, they are new aftermarket parts. In conjunction with the cylinder bore diameters you've just written down, measuring your piston diameters will allow you to verify piston the wall, aka piston the bore. Clearance. Proper clearance ranges from less than a thousandth of an inch for some cast pistons, as high as a hundredth of an inch for forged pistons. The exact specs varies by piston alloy. Aftermarket pistons normally include a spec sheet with the recommended clearance listed, as well as the type of clearances that your machine shop has had success with past engines. Error compounding for imprecise measuring tools mean you may not get very accurate readings for this but way out of whack measurements should have you on the phone with your machine shop. As a side note, you may also measure specs on your cylinder heads, like valve to guide clearance, but your tools probably lack precision needed for these checks too. So what we need to do, what this is suggesting we need to do is to pull out each piston. Let me put some stuff away though first.
All right, so we're checking clearances here, piston clearances. And I printed these instructions from the Summit uh, webpage. And there were two sets of instructions, but they look pretty much identical. So anyway, congratulations on the purchase of your Pro LS pistons, yada, 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 yada. As an engine builder, it's your responsibility to confirm all, all clearances are correct. Piston to wall clearance. Pro LS pistons are designed to be run at four one thousandth inch clearance as measured at the gauge point in the skirt coating 90 degrees to the wrist pin. Extra clearance will result in piston slap. If an aftermarket block has thick ductile sleeves or a partial block fill, increase clearance to five thousandths. Well, that doesn't apply. All right. So we want to make sure there's not more than four thousandth clearance. All right. So it says extra clearance it says nine <clears throat> are designed to be run at four thousandths clearance as measured at the gauge point in the skirt coating 90 degrees to the wrist pin so that's basically measured this way right so if we go here and we measure this on these dots then that that comes in at I wonder if that's what these dots are for. 3.808. Oh, All right. And if you remember, when I measured the bores on each cylinder, it was about 3.811. 3.811. So that puts us at about 3 thousandth clearance, which uh, I'm okay with. All right, so we'll put this guy back and on to the next one. And remember, the bores were all about 3.811. So if you're wondering why I didn't write any of this down, that's the reason why, because the numbers, remember how precise that was? Go back earlier and you'll see on my episode there how precise that was. Oh, look at this. 3.808, that's identical. Damn, why should I even bother measuring the rest? But I will, because you know what? It's the right thing to do. And interesting, the instructions said don't use any solvents. It says clean with soap and water. <laughs> Where did it say that? Uh, never wash the pistons with solvents. Use soap and water. Isn't that funny? No mineral spirits. Let's go ahead with this guy here. I know, I know. You're probably wondering, do I have to measure each of these? Spot on. Damn it, yes, I'm going to. Spot on. Slow down there, buddy. Spot on. I'm enjoying what I'm seeing here. There it is, right on the money. Money. That one's a slightly, I think that's something one of them is slightly a thousandth larger than all the rest. How about that? All right. 
So that's that measurement. All right, we're almost getting ready for some exciting stuff here. So uh, what are we gonna do with that? We are going to. So what we're doing here is we're checking for Two point oh nine eight. 